God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, creatures here below. Praise Him, all ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Praise God from whom all blessings flow.
throw hope, hope blessings flow. Praise him, creatures here below. Praise him, all ye heavenly hosts. Mm. Praise Father, Son, and God from all blessings flow. We praise you, Jesus. Praise him, creatures here below. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Praise him, all ye heavenly hosts. Mm. Praise Father, Son. There's a river, river water 
we just want to welcome you here tonight into our service and we're so grateful that you've tuned in and you know there's such a great presence of the Lord in the room here we just really hope and anticipate that you're experiencing the same level of freedom that it feels like he's creating here and so I just had a scripture come to mind as we were singing this beautiful last song and I hope it encourages you tonight it's from the book of Galatians and it says this in Galatians 5 verse 1 it is for freedom that Christ has set us free stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery Paul continues on to say this but the fruit of the Spirit is love love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And it just feels like in the room tonight that God's just wanting to restore joy to people's hearts. I know that it could feel like it's been a really tough season. And I think the, the introverts may have been loving being at home, not being as, as social, but the extroverts are sort of dying on the inside. But wherever you find yourself tonight, it feels like God just wants to reward everybody with joy. And so I wonder just as we uh, move into the next phase of our service tonight, that you could just open up your hands, you could open up your hearts, and you could just invite God in a little bit deeper to give you the fruit of the Spirit, and in particular, joy tonight. So I'm going to pray for everybody, and then why don't you just receive while we uh, pray. So God, we just thank you that you have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control for everybody in here tonight. And it's not because of anything that we've earned. We can't achieve that stuff we can only receive it, God. And so we're just going to get into receive mode tonight, whatever that looks like. But I know that it looks like an open heart to you. And God, whether you feel close tonight or far away, I just, I just know your heart is so for people that you want to touch them afresh tonight. Would you cause your just a refreshing wind of the Holy Spirit just to rise up on the inside of people's hearts and minds and, and lives tonight, whether you're in the young generation or older generation, it doesn't matter. If you're here on planet Earth, God's got the fruit of the Spirit for you. So Holy Spirit, will you just rise up on the inside of everybody tonight? Will you just set people free from the things that just tend to bottle up the fruit of the Spirit, and will you allow us to exchange those things, give them to you, and in return, freely receive all the fruit of the Spirit that we just mentioned before. So God, we just thank you that you're for us, you're not against us. You evidence that by sending Jesus. And we just thank you, God, that you're here tonight, meeting with us in our homes. We're probably getting used to that more than being in the building, and that's okay because you live in a mobile home. You live in our hearts. You go wherever we go. We go wherever you go. God, will you just cause freedom to rise up on the inside of our hearts tonight as we worship you and set our affection on you. And we're just so looking forward to encountering your love and your presence through this encounter prayer worship service tonight. And if you agree with me at home, why don't you just say yes and amen because God wants to do it for you. So we say yes and amen in Jesus' name. Well, thanks again for tuning in. My name's Andrew Gilbert. I'm one of the staff here. And it's just really great that you've tuned in on a Sunday night. You might be eating dinner. Perhaps you're having a study break or maybe you're just having a bit of a chill session on the couch, just sort of streaming in like your favorite TV show almost. But either way, we're just happy that you're watching and with us tonight. And again, we just uh, want to encourage you just to position your own heart, just to encounter God's love at home, whatever that looks like for you. And so we do want to welcome, in particular, the new people that may be streaming online tonight. I know that this morning on our stream, I saw local people streaming in. I saw names that I hadn't seen stream in for a while, which is fantastic. And I saw someone from the UK streaming in, which is awesome. So I don't know what the time difference is, but we're just really thankful that God God's blessed us to be a local church as well as, I guess, an international church. And that's just cool because of the internet, obviously. But uh, we want to welcome you. And you can see on the bottom of the screen there the website that if you're new, you can, uh, you can type in that link into your web browser, welcome.scw.church. Follow the directions on that prompt and you'll be able to contact us. Let us know that you're new and then we can just start up a conversation with, even in online church, how we can get you connected into church life here. And also I want to do a special shout out to any of the kids from Foreverland who might be watching tonight over dinner with mum and dad and also to the youth. I know that you've all been doing your homework and diligently you've got free time now to be able to watch. So well done to you guys and girls. And so just really pumped that you can tune in with us over dinner tonight. And we look forward to uh, seeing all the comments on the thread uh, tonight. It's always fun to read those. 
uh, comments. So we're, we're also going to move into our generous giving now. You can see the slide on the screen. We've got many ways to give generously here. And, you know, some really great testimonies just coming out of the generosity that we have as a church here is, you know, locally we've been helping in a food bank uh, um, a relationship that we have with a lot of other churches in this region. And so we've been working together to supply food to those that need help in this particular moment in time. And just some great testimonies from the council and politicians ringing up trying to find out how we've been doing what we've been doing and they want to hear testimonies because they're hearing the impact of just practical help just helping people on the front lines and so we've been a part of that which means you've been a part of that and we're so thankful for that and this morning there was also a great testimony again from Heidi Baker just on the impact that we as Stairway Church have had at an international level as well and uh, she may share some of that on the video tonight but again it's just really exciting isn't it church that we get to partner with God locally and in internationally and again the church is not the building we're bigger than Sundays we're bigger than the building the church is us the church is you the church is the body of Christ coming together and working together to see God's kingdom of love extended into hearts and minds and so again why don't you just pat yourself on the back and just say you know what I'm a part of something bigger than myself and and that goes for again any generation that's a part of this church and so well done to us but there's more that we're here to do as well so We've got a really exciting service ahead tonight. We're looking forward to, we're jumping into some more worship in a moment. And then after that, we've got Craig and the team going to be sharing with us. But I'm just going to pray one more time as we lead back in with the worship team. And then we'll, uh, we'll let God encounter you at home where you're at tonight. And so, Father God, we just thank you again that you're here tonight. Yes, in the building, but you're at home around the dinner table. You're at home on the couches. You're at home in, uh, in the offices, the studies that people have been studying on because yes, life looks different, but you're just everywhere, God. We cannot escape your love. And so God, I just thank you that you're so hungry to encounter people with your love tonight. Whether you feel close or far, that your love doesn't change. You're here for us. You're here to engage us and you want to set us free. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. So God, I just invite you to come in and set people free. Whatever freedom looks like, it could be external freedom. There's some circumstances going on that you would love to see changed in their world. God, will you meet people in that place? And Father, it could be internal freedom that people are needing. Will you set people internally free tonight? It could be relational tension. It could be workplace uh, things that are just on our hearts. But God, you're big enough to carry it all. And it is for freedom that Christ set us free. So God, we just invite your love to come in, your freedom to come in, and we're anticipating you moving in our hearts and minds and lives again tonight, in Jesus' name. Well, why don't you enter back into worship?
evening and thanks for joining us in this encounter and prayer night this evening. It's a privilege to be here and privilege to be in a space that we can share. And whether you're at work tonight, you're in your lounge room, you're in your kitchen, you're around a dining table, you're in your bedroom for an early night, wherever it is that you are, we've been praying for you. We've been praying for the people that are going to engage with this evening because we truly believe that this is going to be a profound opportunity to do everything that that song just declared, that we would shift our hearts again, that we would, we would intend our lives towards Jesus, the one that we love, towards our Creator, towards the one for whom we have always been designed, for the, towards the one who we have been restored to be just like. So we've been praying for this night. Way back months ago when we planned for such things, we were intending for Heidi Baker to be able to join with us this evening in our auditorium. Of course, everything has changed in that respect. However, Pete McHugh and I were able to join with Heidi a couple of weeks ago through a video conference be able to just hear a few things from Heidi's heart. She came to us with much gratitude for ways that we'd been able to come alongside and to help and to serve. Then she shared a word of encouragement from her heart. If you haven't heard that word of encouragement, I would really suggest that you have a look at it during the week and you can access that just through looking at the video stream from this morning's service. We didn't just want to repeat what happened this morning. We actually thought that tonight created a moment for us to be able to take some snippets from some of the things that Heidi shared. And rather than just running through, passing over, actually take a moment to go deep. So if you've just joined us, next chapter ran just at the very beginning of the service. We started with a couple of songs of worship just to get us into the space. We've welcomed our visitors tonight, received the offering. The rest of this evening is ours to encounter Jesus with. We're putting our eyes on heaven. We're believing that as we do so, as we encounter Jesus, then there's more than enough overflow for us. We believe that as we pray and we encounter Him, we stir up something that changes things on earth. And honestly, confidently, I declare tonight that we are going to be able to look back on this night and go, goodness, didn't everything change when we got together in united prayer and seeking an encounter with the one that loves us so much in the way that we did? Didn't everything change? So we got Katie Wheatley Price here this evening who's going to be helping lead us. In case you don't know Katie, she as a teenager was on the base with her family at Iris Pemba for a while and then as an adult was able to do the harvest school across three different nations and completed that last year. She's going to help lead us in this prayer and encounter night tonight. In just a moment I'm going to cut to a video, the, sh the first snippet, something that Heidi wanted to share, a word of encouragement for us. Before we do that, I think just important to let you know some context context is that over in Mozambique right now, they're battling with the same COVID-19 virus that we are, but also some uh, very serious situation with in northern Mozambique, radical insurgents that are actually causing disarray and trauma, death in a whole bunch of those areas. So much so that the population of Pemba right now has more than doubled as a result of a refugee influx for people fleeing for their lives. It's not a particularly safe place to be. When we heard that, we were able to uh, speak with our governance teams and the For Goodness Sake Committee who've been entrusted with stewarding money that we've given through realizing the dream over the last 12 plus months. And so it's a great joy and celebration to have actually been able to be a part of that. Tonight, whether you were a contributor of a $30,000 amount or a $50 amount, just the fact that we're able to say we were partners in this actually is a moment to stop, 
and reflect and recognise we're a part of being a significant change to the world. So we were able to, out of our emergency fund, release $100,000 last week and send that over to support what uh, Iris is doing in Mozambique to support with physical and spiritual things, uh, people that are refugees and people further north of there. If you want to hear some more detail about that, again, have a look for the video clips in this morning's service. Right now, that's just to set a little bit of context for when we hear the, the situation that Heidi is speaking from towards us. Heidi Baker's life is truly one to imitate. And Paul says, 1 Corinthians 11, 1, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Says to us, let's find people that are further along from us that are in different situations to us and let's learn what we can apply to our life. Tonight, my prayer is from Heidi's life that we would be able to find a new place of surrender that we would be able to find a new place of love, radical, laid down, poured out love for Jesus. We would come with a new confidence to shake earth with the power of heaven. That's what a couple of nights, because the internet was a bit in and out, on a Zoom call with Heidi has done for my heart. I trust the same will happen in your heart this evening. Let's kick to the first one of our short little videos and then we're going to move into our time of encounter and prayer this evening. Thanks for joining us. I had a scripture, scripture on my heart. Um, I, I love sharing from the book of Colossians and I just, I look at the Australian bride right now and, and I think about all you, you've been through. I mean, you've had fires, crazy, crazy fires. You're dealing with COVID. You've had earthquakes um, around. I mean, you've, you've been through a lot and, and you're still reaching out to others. And that's a phenomenal thing. Like, I think it's very powerful how Australians are just continuing to care, not only for their neighbors, but, but for people out in the rest of the world. And that's very, very powerful. And I was um, praying about what to share with you guys and really want to just read a little bit from the book of Philippians. Uh, the book of Philippians, and then um, I want to read a little bit from Colossians. Is that okay? This is um, Paul. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now... As always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or death. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I'm torn between the two. I desire to depart and be together with Christ, which is better by far. But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith. So that through my being with you again, your joy in Christ Jesus will overflow on account of me. Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. I, I feel like this is just coming from our team here. All of our team here uh, want to send our all our love to you and say whether we live or die, we, we live for the glory of God. And if we die, we die for the glory of God. Um, and we feel like God's going to give us the victory over this crazy um, situation in our country, this COVID in your country, and God's going to make us be able to just preach his glorious gospel together again. But at the same time, um, we know that our lives belong to him, and we are going to live in this place of radical joy. We choose joy. We choose joy unspeakable and full of glory. And I feel like God just, just just reaching out to the Australian bride and saying, choose joy, choose life, 
choose to find the, the lining on the cloud, choose to find a connection with your husband, your wife, your children, anybody that he has um, allowed you to be around, choose joy, beloved, because even if, even if nothing ever shifts in this world, our joy comes from knowing him. And he's joy unspeakable and full of glory. And I just have to, like, I, I speak to myself right now. I, I woke up this morning and I just said, Roland, let's just quickly jump in and, and swim for half an hour before the call because we want to just, just rejoice in the fact that we still can get out in the ocean. And I'm telling you, just that little thing brought me joy. It's like, yay, I'm going to stay. And I'm praying in tongues, looking at the fish underwater you know with my snorkel and feeling the joy and I feel like God wants us as a people in Australia in Mozambique to concentrate on what he's doing so Lord yes we we agree with the book of Philippians in chapter 1 when it says yes and I will continue to rejoice so Lord in that moment those very real moments where in our humanity, Jesus, we've got caught up with other things. Tonight is a night where we, we turn our hearts in the way that Heidi's encouraged us and we say, yes, we will find joy. We will rejoice. And even right now for people that are a part of our evening and who are saying, but I cannot rejoice. I cannot find joy then we say, Holy Spirit, the fruit of your presence is joy. And we ask for a grace to be able to, even beyond what is humanly possible in our life, to, to turn to you, to rejoice. Jesus, we turn our hearts tonight. Why don't you lead us, Katie? wanted to share some things that have been on my heart this week um, and I really believe that God's going to encounter every one of you right, right where you are. Um, His presence isn't just here but it's right in your lounge room, right where you are um, and I think that's something that God really wants you to know that He's just going to meet you right where you're at and I think some of you some of you might be confused, some of you might be in pain, some of you might be might have questions and doubts, some of you might be celebrating, might be rejoicing, might be on that mountain but I feel like God just really wants you to know that He's going to meet you right where you're at, wherever you are. Um, and this week for me, I, I've been processing a lot of disappointment. Um, I guess plans that I had for the year or years ahead that have kind of fallen through, not just because of COVID, but just different circumstances that I haven't been able to do what I felt God put on my heart. Um, and I felt God say to me that he's going to turn my disappointment into joy. And I was like, how is that possible? You know, they're, they're the complete opposite things. Um, but I feel like that's just the kind of God that he is. He turns, he turns those things that, we seem, that seem impossible into, into joy and into hope. Um, and I just wanted to share this verse from Psalm 33, 1 to 4, from the Passion Translation that God put on my heart for you all today. It says, it's time to sing and shout for joy. Go ahead, all you redeemed ones, do it. Praise Him with all you have, for praise looks lovely on the lips of God's lovers. Play the guitar as you lift your praises loaded with thanksgiving. Sing and make joyous music with all you've got inside. Compose new melodies that release new praises to the Lord. Play His praises on instruments with the anointing and skills He gives you. Sing and shout with passion make a spectacular sound of joy for god's word is something to sing about he is true to his promises his word can be trusted and everything he does is reliable and right and so i just want to release a prayer of joy into every household into every person young and old rich or poor and everything in between because i feel like tonight god's just releasing deep joy He's birthing joy into your hearts and it's joy that's gonna stay. It's like that song, I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart to stay. 
It's not there just for tonight and to go in the morning. It's there to stay. And I just want to release Romans 15, 13 over you. Now, may God, the inspiration and fountain of hope, fill you to over overflowing with uncontainable joy and perfect peace as you trust in Him. And may the power of the Holy Spirit continually surround your life with its super abundance until you radiate with hope. And so, Lord, I just want to come to you. I just want to lift up everyone here and everyone watching from home or wherever, Lord. And I just want to pray that you would just birth deep joy tonight. It's not a coincidence that the theme here is joy. It's very intentional, Lord, because you, you want to birth this joy in every, every single heart. And whether you don't feel it right now, we trust that you are doing a deep work in everyone's hearts. Even if we can't see it, you're working. Even if we can't feel it, you're working. And we declare that tonight, Lord. And I thank you that when Jesus died on the cross, he died so that we may live life to the full and that we may have an abundance of joy. And I thank you that in that joy, you fill us to overflow. We will never run dry of this joy that we have in you, Lord. And so I just release that into every heart tonight. Deep, deep joy, Lord. Thank you, God. Just gonna head over to the worship team and they're gonna lead us into something beautiful.
one of the things that Heidi said was, I wrote it down. She said, even if nothing shifts in this life, our joy comes from knowing Him. This is from someone whose place is surrounded by guards right now and who lives in danger every day, even if nothing changes. Our joy comes from knowing Him. Can we find that place in our hearts in this moment, whatever it is, the circumstances that are surrounding us and trying to suck that joy from us? Could we say with Heidi, could we believe that truth together? Even if nothing changes, my joy comes from knowing Him. Because the, the profound thing is that in that space, everything does change. And so of course, we're focusing our prayer and our moment right now on His filling us up, on us choosing His joy, locating who He is. But there's one of those kingdom contradictions because as we allow Him to be Him to us, atmospheres change. So Father, I pray for every person on this stream right now, and whether they're sitting on a couch with a bunch of others or whether they're sitting alone right now, I pray that Your grace would enable us to choose joy, to make that commitment that says, even if nothing changes, yes, we will choose joy. And we know, Lord, that that's not just a prayer for ourselves. We know, Lord, that that's a prayer for our family, for those far away and those close, for our household, for our street, for our church community. It's a prayer for all of us. It's a prayer for our city. It's a prayer for our, our state and for our premier, for our nation, and for our government, for the nations. Our, our prayer for everyone that I've just mentioned, our prayer, Lord, is that we would find joy, that it'd be joy everlasting, the joy that comes from you, profound moments of transformation. But Lord, we also, we're wise enough to know. We can't talk about joy. We can't point our finger and wave it round. We laid down our agenda two songs ago. We said, we're sorry, Lord, for the times when our agenda has risen up before you, your face, your, the person of Jesus. So we're submitting now to you, but I just sense so strongly it's submitting with a cause. Maybe some of you like me, sometimes we we feel it's a little bit selfish to just come in that place of receiving. I know I find myself in that place sometimes. I'm torn. I want to pray for others, but I know I need Him so much myself. The both are wrapped up together. So right now we pray the Christians, His body would arise and we would arise with such joy that yes, everything does change. We're praying for the nations, Jesus. We're praying for Northern Mozambique. And we're saying that joy is a weapon against the spiritual enemy. Joy is a weapon against the devil. Joy is a weapon against sickness. Joy is the weapon He gives us. And we declare, we agree with that truth statement. And joy comes from you. Your eyes and hope begin 
In a minute, we're just going to throw to the second video that um, Heidi shared with um, Peter and Craig. But as we were just worshipping, I just got an image of this jar. um, And I just feel like the jar represents your situations. And I feel like some of you, the jar has felt empty um, in the sense of you haven't felt joy in a long time. Um, And I just see God just filling it to overflow. Um, And, you know, as you pour it in, it, it just keeps it just keeps bubbling out and I feel like some of you have never experienced the joy that you're going to experience right now and over these next coming weeks and it may have been years it may have been weeks that you haven't felt this joy but I just see God filling that jar not just with his joy but with his hope with his love with all those fruits of the spirits that you may you may not have been feeling um, 
for that period of time. So I just want to bless you with that um, and just just pray overflowing joy and hope um, into all of your situations um, right now. So Jeremy, we're going to flick to the video. Thanks. This is this is a, a direct just word I have for stairway and just just who you are. I feel like the words of Paul again. I love reading the word. And it says, the faith and love that spring from the hope that is stored up for you in heaven. What, what is he saying? That because we've heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love you have for all the saints. And I see that through you, through all of you there, just blessing us here. Like, you don't just love your own people and your own country. And you have enough going on yourselves, but you're loving the saints out here in, in northern Mozambique. The faith and love that spring from hope that is stored up for you in heaven and that you have already heard about in the word of truth. The gospel that has come to you all over the world, this gospel is bearing fruit. Come on, that should bring you joy, fruit everywhere. And this food aid, by the way, is going to bear fruit because we're not just giving out food because we're giving out seeds, lots and lots of seeds, moringa seed, tomato seed, onion seed. So it's not just spiritual fruit. It's physical fruit. And we're challenging everybody to grow it. And then we're sharing the gospel about what it looks like to be connected to Jesus and, and put your seed in the ground. And so I just... I just love you guys. Listen to this. All over the world, this gospel is bearing fruit and growing just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard of it and understood God's grace and truth. And you are a grace-based people. You understand the grace of God. You understand the love of truth and the grace of God. And this is my final bit. From the words of Paul in Colossians, for this reason, since the, day, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And we pray this in order that you would live, all of you there in Australia, you would live a life worthy of the Lord. And you would please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power, according to his glorious might, and that you may have great endurance and patience, joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. So my prayer for you is endurance, patience, joy, wisdom, knowledge. Just, oh God, just fill, fill them, Lord. Fill them with the knowledge of your will. Lord, I thank you, Jesus. God, I'm just overwhelmed. God, I'm just yeah, I'm overwhelmed by their generosity, God. I'm just overwhelmed that they care about people on the other side of the world, Lord. People who who are suffering, Lord, but they, they've suffered too. And Jesus, I just thank you for your beautiful body, God. I thank you for John 17. I thank you, Lord, for for Kevin, for Peter, for Lynn, for their team, for all of them at Stairway, God. I thank you, Jesus, for all those watching, Lord, for all those who care, God. And I pray, Jesus, that you would give us endurance and patience, that we would not just look at the clouds and not just look at the storm and not just look at the virus and not just look at the cholera and not just look at the 
radical insurgents and the fear, Lord, but we would focus our affection on you. Jesus, you are worthy of it all, and we give you our lives, Lord, and we give you our hearts, Lord, and we say you are worthy, God, and even though we're willing to die for the gospel, we trust you, Lord, that we will live for more decades and decades and decades, Lord, that we will carry your love and your truth. And Lord, we will meet again together, all of us, Lord, face to face. We will meet together again and just rejoice and, and sit around even our living rooms and even on our porches and just tell the stories of the goodness of God in the land of the living. I love you, Jesus. And I bless you, Jesus. And I bless my brothers and sisters in Australia. In Jesus' name. I just wanted to share one last thing before the worship team um, leads us again. Um, I just have this, this thing around seeds and I know Heidi was talking about fruits and seeds being planted during this time. Um, and you know, something God's been teaching me is there've been periods in my life when it feels on the surface like nothing, nothing's happening. Um, and through, through those hard times and through those times of feeling nothing, he's, he's taught me that, you know, when seeds are planted, they have that time under the soil. They have that time of nourishment um, and being fed that you can't always see, right? Um, and I think that's, I love how nature teaches us so much about um, God's heart. And so I just wanted to encourage you today that God is planting seeds. Um, he's planting seeds in your heart and, he's pl and you're planting seeds as you love one another during this time and as you encourage and support each other during this time. And don't get disheartened if you can't feel or if you can't see um, the outward expression of that just yet because he is doing a deep work um, and he's faithful to bring that to fruition um, in his timing. So trust that you are being nourished and God is feeding you even if you can't, even if you can't see it happening just yet because he's, he who promised is faithful and he's not going to let you down um, and he's not going to give up on, on the promises that he's spoken over you. So yeah, worship team, if you could lead us into that last song, that'd be great.
starts in here where we, we say, Lord, your gospel is good news. It's good news for our hearts, it's good news for our mind. It's, it's good news for the world. And as Heidi shared in that beautiful way from Colossians 1, that fruit from our lives is bearing fruit all over the earth. So Lord, would you help us this moment of reset to have, to have once again said to you, here, take our life. We focus on you beyond the circumstances. We join with your people and, and, and we join with you in what you're doing all over the earth to repair things to how they were always meant to be. And Lord, we thank you for the privilege of allowing us to be a part of that. We thank you that the, the work that you do in our heart doesn't end there. There's fruit of the gospel all over the earth. So right now, Lord, we pray for those nations that are struggling for resources. We pray for uh, northern Mozambique and all of the, the threats and the challenges that are facing them there. Lord, we pray for nations all over the world, first world nations, nations that are still gripped with fear or panic or uncertainty, nations that wrestle with the same things that happen in our heart. And we say, Lord, would that gospel, that good news about the fact that you restore things to how they were meant to be, Lord, would that good news transform and bring fruit all over the world like it has done, like Paul says in Colossians 1, that it's begun in our heart. So, man, we just want to thank you so much for being a part of our prayer and encounter time tonight. We trust that it's been a time where we've been able to reset, realign with the Lord, fall in love with Him again, be overwhelmed by His goodness. Maybe it's the kind of a video that you're going to go back and, and uh, play over and over when you're driving somewhere or you're having that quiet time in your house or in your own space. Maybe for me and praying this through tonight, one of the most profound things is that recognition that what starts in here goes on to make a contribution to what God's doing in transforming the earth. May that be a truth that you can embrace this week as well as you go with joy, you go with hope, you go with His strength into whatever it is that is a part of your week this week. And a hand back to Andrew and Kate, and they're going to just share a couple of final things that we want to share with you with tonight. Thanks again for joining us. Back to you, Andrew and Kate. Well, thanks so much for joining us tonight. We trust that you've experienced God's love and heart for you. And we do understand that uh, you may want prayer for something tonight that God's brought up in your life. And we want to offer that service to you tonight. You'll see some details along the bottom of your screen right now. Yeah, that's right. If uh, like this morning when they said, you know, grab all the people around you to pray and you were like me alone, uh, that I love that there's opportunity right now that the prayer team, you don't have to have someone in your home with you, that there's an opportunity for you to right now text in. Let me get the number 0492. 800 695 0492 uh, should be on the screen if not it will be up the way soon but um, if you S SMS in um, someone's going to call you back uh, to pray with you over the phone which is absolutely amazing and I should have taken advantage of that this morning but just an opportunity to have a chat and uh, to get some prayer uh, just like we would normally do on a Sunday when we're in the house uh, the prayer team want to be able to serve you uh, so make sure you take advantage of that even if you have people around you maybe you still want to do that you can send an sms one more time 0492 800 695 yeah so trust you'll have a great amazing. week looking forward to seeing you next week catch you next time guys